It's been said time and time again on this channel, a quote I truly adore, nothing will kill a legacy more than expectations. In the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game, we have over 10,000 cards, and it goes without saying, they can't all be good. Duelists for the most part, I believe, have fairly reasonable expectations. But where they get jaded is when the hype cranks those expectations up to a 10, only to be met with a card deck or archetype that performs more like a 5. This new series I've created, aptly titled The Biggest Flops in Yu-Gi-Oh! History, is all about that. Yu-Gi-Oh! cards, themes, and archetypes that were way overhyped and ultimately failed miserably based on the initial excitement and expectations. In this series, I'll cover the cards themselves, how the hype went, and most importantly, what went wrong. I'll also be making no disparity when it comes to who hyped these cards, whether it be competitive players, online Yu-Gi-Oh! content creators like, well, me, or yes, even Konami themselves. If cards were massively or legitimately overhyped, and it didn't come close to matching that hype, they'll qualify for this series. But before we jump further into the video, let me take a moment to thank our sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends is the immensely popular, world-renowned, action-packed RPG available on mobile and PC platforms. Raid has amazing graphics, intense battles, absolutely mind-blowing boss fights, and a rewarding leveling system. Not to mention a multitude of character classes and hundreds of unique champions to choose from. I'm a big fan of Kale personally, he's a dark elf and one of the first champs you can access. I've also been known to take Athel for a spin. Honestly, she's probably my favorite champ. Her Divine Blades ability is crazy and has a 15% chance of being a critical hit. Right now, you can get the new legendary champion Deliana just for playing Raid for 7 days by July 20th. Enter code MYDELIANA for massive bonuses to help you level her up as quickly as possible too. So start your thrilling quest by downloading Raid Shadow Legends today. But that's not all. Hit the link in the description and you'll also get a starter pack worth almost $40 to kickstart your game. This includes three free champions, Tiger Soul, Romero, and Misery Cord. Not to mention 30 XP brews for leveling up. Available on Android, iOS, or PC. And don't forget to check your inbox every single day and check out the shop for absolutely free rewards that you get just for logging in. Now, without further ado, let's cover quite possibly the most infamous card of 2017, Sea Monster of Theseus. Some watching this video probably let out a laugh the second I mentioned the card by name. After all, it's no secret, Sea Monster of Theseus has hit full-blown infamy in the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG community. While the card premiered in the absolutely stacked Raging Tempest Core booster set in January 2017, we actually need to go back two weeks prior to that. After all, that's when this whole debacle started. The official Yu-Gi-Oh! blog is an excellent tool for Konami to get out information to the community, display written coverage of premiere events like the YCS series, and let us know about new products coming down the pipeline. While some of the articles may be written by random Konami employees who have never touched a card and are simply published under Konami Digital Entertainment, there are many others that featured seasoned veterans like Shonen Jump Champion and World's Participant Mike Konahim or longtime Yu-Gi-Oh! writer Jason Gerbermeyer, who I've probably mentioned by name a hundred times in these history videos. The point that I'm making here is that the Konami blog was a well-respected and highly trusted source for Yu-Gi-Oh! information, right up until this incident. On January 3rd, 2017, head of Konami R&D, Jerome McHale, published what at first appeared to be a fairly run-of-the-mill article. The title implied a nice gift for Yu-Gi-Oh! duelist, and he started off by wishing players a happy new year. Nothing out of the ordinary, in fact, most companies write stuff like this early January each year. Where things got interesting, though, was when Jerome noted that he would be revealing the text of, quote, one of the strongest monsters will be releasing all year, and by simply clicking read more, players would instantly be granted access to this monster's effect. This line alone sent readers, content creators, and duelists into an absolute frenzy. It wasn't just the allure and promise of an insanely powerful card, but many, like YouTube's own Farfa, theorized that it would be a brand new TCG World Premiere card. I personally predicted that Jerome was hinting at Zodiac Momorat, aka Rap Year, 
But I had to admit that Farfa's logic of why would they reveal and hype up a card that is already largely known to the player base did make a lot of sense. In fact, so many players were mesmerized by the idea of a new broken monster that most disregarded the fact that the space where this new monster's effect was supposed to be was actually completely blank in the article. It was a pretty common belief at the time that it was simply an error on Konami's part or that maybe Jerome was trying to use some out of the box metaphor. In hindsight, you could probably say that this wasn't actually Jerome's fault, as he would go on to say in the article that the monster's effect was essentially a blank slate. Again, it sounded very much like a metaphor, but he was being 100% literal here. Over the next 24 hours, hype and buzz around this new powerful promised monster grew to nuclear levels. In fact, things got so out of hand on social media that Jerome himself actually posted an immediate follow-up article the very next day. This was basically to confirm that it wasn't a publicity stunt and that he wasn't trolling. To put this into context, Konami almost never responds directly to the community with their articles, but this was clearly an exception. While clarified in the second article that there was in fact no picture in the original, and that this new powerful monster did nothing, that actually just raised more questions in the community. After all, how could one of the most powerful monsters of the entire year do nothing and have no effect? Is this guy losing his marbles, some wondered? Well, two weeks later, we get our incredibly and wildly disappointing reveal, and all of these questions would be answered. Jerome McHale isn't just the head of R&D for the TCG side of things with Yu-Gi-Oh!, he's also someone who's basically been around this game since its inception. Heck, I remember him doing competitive feature coverage going as far back as the GX days at Shonen Jump Championships. He's a brilliant mind, and there's almost nothing about this game he doesn't know. In other words, he's the realist, but this is when keeping it real goes wrong. Sea Monster of Theseus was revealed to be a level 5 water attribute zombie fusion tuner monster with 2200 attack, 1800 defense, and absolutely no effect. Basically, its entire gimmick was that it was Yu-Gi-Oh's first ever fusion tuner monster. It was indeed cute, and being level 5 made it a viable target for instant fusion, which I believe Jerome had in mind when he designed the card, considering he pointed out the play specifically in the follow-up article. Despite having no effect, the card wasn't initially seen as terrible due to its synchro ability nature, but almost everyone unilaterally agreed the card was a gigantic letdown considering the bill of goods we were sold. The odd thing was, Jerome actually doubled down on his delusional idea of how powerful Theseus was in reality, as he opened up his third article by saying, quote, When we said that one of the strongest monsters that will be released in 2017 has no effect, we weren't kidding. This actually just annoyed the community even more, as some began wondering if he was openly trolling, or if he had truly just forgotten what a powerful monster was in Yu-Gi-Oh. Seemingly completely out of touch, Konami would go on to release the monster of Theseus and the single highest rarity possible at the time of Secret Rare. This was seen as laughable, considering Raging Tempest was an earth-shattering set in terms of power, and Theseus was now sharing a rarity with cards such as Zodiac Trident, That Grass Looks Greener, and Zodiac Broadbull. All were so strong that they're currently banned in the TCG. The Secret Rare printing clearly displayed that Jerome truly believed that players would be thrilled and basically tripping over themselves with the idea of new decks and lines of play because the game now had a high level fusion tuner monster. Jerome had even mentioned in his article obscure fusion monsters like fusionists that had seen past competitive play for justification of his hype. For the record, Fusionist was used during early Zexel as part of the wind-up loop. While his thought process wasn't wrong and Theseus could in theory see competitive play for the same reason, what Jerome failed to realize was it generally took insanely broken combos using the likes of cards like wind-up carriers and mighty to make these obscure vanilla extra deck monsters viable. It wasn't that the cards themselves were strong or really even that valuable, they were simply cogs in a system and were selected because of their niche characteristics. Upon its initial release, Sea Monster of Theseus was shunned, mocked, and memed constantly. It being printed as a secret rare only made that worse, because most didn't believe that it deserved the rarity. However, with Instant Fusion at 3, 
it actually did have a sizable competitive run from February through May, especially on the regional level. It's true that Theseus was only playable with instant fusion, but it also made for some incredibly easy Psyframe Lord Omega plays with any level 3 non-tuner monster. Omega was one of the best synchro monsters in the entire game at the time, and making him easier was something that heavily intrigued players, especially when Elder Entity Norden was also legal at the time, and so many duelists were running instant fusion maxed out just for him alone. Theseus could be seen essentially as a backup plan, or another avenue for different plays. Some Dark Synchro players did exactly that, as they used him in conjunction with monsters like Level Eater for all sorts of craziness. A lot of it involved things like shooting Quasar Dragon. Sea Monster of Theseus' play would fall off noticeably during the second half of 2017 after Elder Entity Norden was banned in June, and Instant Fusion became significantly less popular. In the second half of 2017, Konami also introduced Master Rule 4, which devastated cards like Instant Fusion, as Fusion monsters were now required to be summoned in the extra monster zone or to have Link monsters on field. It goes without saying, but neither was really ideal for these types of plays, and it was a huge debuff to the card, and in turn, Sea Monster of Theseus itself. There were a few exceptions like Alejandro Navarro's Spiral Deck that made a top 8 finish at YCS Guadalajara in October, where he used it as a tuner primarily for Ancient Fairy Dragon plays involving Spiral Resort. But for the most part, Theseus' popularity in extra decks pretty much fell off hard after the midway point of 2017. Despite the initial notable run that saw Theseus in a multitude of strategies and even as a play enabler sometimes, the card began to have a fairly infamous and continually memed legacy and reputation. Is this really one of the best cards of 2017? Well, here's the new card. Uh, that is supposed to be one of the strongest monsters that we're getting all year. And like you look at it and just as two turners and I'm like, wait, 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 whoa, 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 is this a troll? And I felt like they totally trolled the heck out of everyone. They did it with Tardy Orc before, so don't say Konami never trolled us. Basically, anytime it was brought up after that year, people would often say sly and snarky things like, Sea Monster of Theseus? Oh, you must mean the most powerful monster of 2017. This is just my opinion, but honestly, I believe that players were justified in their sarcastic and passive-aggressive remarks. Theseus could have easily been looked at as successful from a conceptual standpoint, but the main issue here was Jerome McHale going so far and beyond what was necessary in terms of promoting or hyping up the monster. Calling it one of the most powerful monsters though released in the entire year was kind of asinine. Just consider for a moment that Zodiac Trident, Rapier, and Broadbull were all released in the same set as Theseus, and every single one of them has been on the Forbidden and Limited list in the TCG. Heck, Dryden has been banned twice. 2017 was a ridiculous year for Yu-Gi-Oh! with powerhouses like Firewall Dragon, Masterpiece, Ignis Heat, Ash Blossom and Joyous Springs, Dynamite Knight, and many, many more that I don't have time to list, but I think you get the picture that I'm painting here. For Jerome to go so far out on the limb with that vainglorious nonsense for this specific card, most likely just because of its uniqueness and also because he made the card, I believe ultimately was setting this thing up for failure, no matter how you look at it. And for anyone wondering, this is the same man who created Nibiru, Dark Ruler No More, Dimensional Shifter, Spiral, and the Danger Archetype. He knows when a card or theme deserves all world hype. If those articles were never written or were just toned down significantly, a lot more people would look at Sea Monster of Theseus in a better light, and it wouldn't be such an infamous and mean card to this day. And with that, we are at the conclusion of this Yu-Gi-Oh! story. If you enjoyed this new series and the video, or more importantly, you learned something, give the video a big thumbs up, comment your thoughts below, and maybe, maybe just check out the other videos on screen that I think you'll enjoy as well. Thanks for watching.